Welcome to The Power of One. Today, I am going to speak with someone that I know has been a part of all of our lives. I'm going to speak to a pharmacist. And I want you to know the importance of the medicine that doctors are prescribing to you and the importance of taking it as prescribed. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Ben. Ben, how are you? I'm well. How are you doing, ben, Melanie? <laughs> I'm well. Thank you so much. So tell me about being a pharmacist and what is the primary goal for a pharmacist? So um, our primary goal is to dispense the right medication that your doctor prescribed to the right patient and not give it to the wrong patient <laughs> in a reasonable amount of time, counsel you on your medications when you pick up. And then on top of that, we offer and administer vaccinations according to the CDC guidelines, which is quite important right now at this season. Yeah, it is because that the, the new strand of COVID is, is on a rise, correct? And it's flu season, so there are lots of shots to to get. Um, there's an RSV vaccine that's available too. Okay, okay. Let's talk about diabetes medication, high blood pressure medication, cholesterol medication. All of those are extremely important medications. Explain to the viewers why they should be taken as prescribed. That's right, Melanie. All those medications are very important because those conditions can lead to serious consequences if you don't control it, whether by medication or by your food and diet. Um, with diabetes, if you don't control it, it affects your damages your nerves, your eyes, limbs, and kidney. And if you don't take your blood pressure and cholesterol medicine, that can lead to increased risk of heart attacks and strokes. And that's what happens with a lot of men who don't follow up with picking up their prescriptions and taking it because they don't think they need it because high blood pressure is a silent disease. And oh, I had yeah. tell me that um, I wish I had known this years ago that it's a silent disease and to take the medication because he ended up in the hospital. And um, so, yeah, it, it's really important unless you can control it with your diet, then you can slowly get off the medicine. But yeah, the risks are, are pretty high if you don't take your medications. And now that you said about some men who may not take their medications, I did hear this before, and I'm not sure if this is true, but some blood pressure medicines can affect a male's sex life. Is that true? It's possible. Everyone is different. So just because your friend has that side effect doesn't mean you will. Everyone's an individual. And the thing is, there are a lot of options. So if you try one, you keep track of what's going on. If you're feeling you have these side effects that you don't like, you track it and see if it improves. If it doesn't, then you talk to the doctor because there's so many options. You don't want to go without medication. That's, That's right. That's right. Yeah. But it's important, bottom line, is if you're on blood pressure medicine, take that blood pressure medicine. Where should medicines be stored? Well, most medication be stored just at room temperature, like 60s, 70s, even 80s, okay. But um, some medications do need to be refrigerated. Um, so make sure you're reading the prescription label. And if you're not sure, check with the pharmacist or a doctor because there are eye drops that need to be refrigerated. And I've caught people not knowing that they were supposed to all this time. And of course, a lot of insulin and injectable medications need to be refrigerated as well. Yeah, it, it's just deep that you say that. My dad, uh, he'll be 81 this year and he had an infection in both eyes and we had to take him to Will's Eye Hospital and he did have a medication that needed to be refrigerated. That's my first time ever, you know, seeing something like that. What happens if someone is traveling and they have to go by plane or train and they have the need for refrigerated medications? Well, in that case, you would want to bring a cooler with some okay. ice and put your medication um, in there. Um, for the travel time, because 
if it's a long, you know, commute, then you definitely want to do that. You don't want to leave it, especially even hot weather. Um, and if you're commuting, definitely keep it with you because in an airplane, there could be delays or cancellations and you don't want to be without your medication just because of those delays. Going back to those very important medications and all medications are important if they're prescribed, the blood pressure medication, cholesterol medication, diabetes medication, are there any risks or restrictions if someone is prescribed these medications? Um, well, certain medications do have restrictions. Like, um, some cholesterol medicine you don't want to take with grapefruit the fruit or the juice because it can affect the metabolism. Of it. So it can increase the effect of your cholesterol medicine, increase the risk of the side effects from it. And then um, there are some that you want to take without food. So like I said, you have to read the prescription level and some you have to uh, avoid sun exposure or wear sunscreen if you're going to be out because it can increase your risk of getting burned. Your sensitivity to the sun is much higher than someone without that medication. Do you find that some people will, and I don't know if you would know this, stop taking medications because of the side effects? There are times when I could be watching a movie or watching a TV show and it'll say you have this condition and they'll name the, the drug. But naming the drug, then it's just this unbelievable list of like side effects. You're like, you know what? Maybe I'm just going to deal with the condition that I have because these some of these side effects are unbelievable. You're like, and some of them could even be like, and it could lead to death. You're like, well, okay, wait a minute. I don't want to die. I just want to get a little better. So let's have a realistic conversation about that. Some of these side effects are alarming. It is alarming. I, I see those commercials and I'm like, oh my God, why would why would anyone take it? <laughs> um, I'm not big on taking medication. I'm more about prevention. So okay. um, when someone is going to take a medication, you really have to discuss the risk and benefits with the doctor. So what are the risks if you don't take it? What are the um, benefits if you take it? And then you have to decide, you are the one who's ultimately going to decide whether or not you take it. Your doctor can prescribe your medication. Um, if it's something life-threatening, like an infection, of course, you want to take it, even if you, it has side effects, because your infection is going to be, you're going to see the effects of it immediately and you're suffering. Right. But um, yeah, you really just have to do some of your own research. Some people are not like that. Some people, they don't care to hear the risks. If they think that's going to solve their problem, they're just going to take it without concern of the side effects and risks. And some medications do have risks. Um, yeah. 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 But it's interesting. You say you're about prevention and not too big on medications. Now, we know that doctors prescribe medicines. Do you see that any doctors prescribe any herbal medications or is that a thing? Well, I think doctors might recommend supplements like vitamins B12 or um, zinc or calcium, the regular ones, but not herbal. I think that would be from an herbalist. That would be okay. different um, dimension of medicine. So regular primary GPs, they probably most definitely will not prescribe herbals. But like ginger, garlic, that's those okay. are vitamins that's kind of herbal, but not really because when you think saying herbal, I'm thinking of like plants where you have to take right. it home. Right. Up. Oh, yeah, yeah no, would not prescribe herbals. <laughs> now, going back to diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol, all major medicines, there are times when people can't afford their medications. Poverty is, is just all over. And there may be times when a generic drug is not available. What happens or what resources are available for those who have like this unbelievable copay but can't afford their medications and a generic is not available? That's a good question. Um, 
Well, some really expensive medications, they have manufactured coupon cards. For instance, mm-hmm. they'll copay down. Um, if it's if you have commercial insurance, they can bring your copay down. But if you don't have good insurance and it's not covered, then your doctor would have to take the additional steps in filling out paperwork to do prior authorizations and fight with the insurance company to get it approved if that's the only drug. Most of the time, mm-hmm. if that's the only drug for your condition, they're going to approve it. But if there are other options, less expensive alternatives, that's probably where your insurance will want you to go first. To right. Try or you go to the more expensive ones. Um, but luckily, most medications do have generics. And not only that, there's a lot of different classes and drugs in that category. So it's always good to do some kind of research and not say, okay, that's my what my doctor prescribed and that's the only drug I can take. Because a lot of times there can be alternatives. Now, I remember speaking to someone and, and they they said to me, I was just speaking about this, my dad has heart failure and the pill, one of the pills that he takes is a thousand dollar pill. Like he takes a pill that costs a thousand dollars a day. I can't even, you know, believe it, but we're fortunate enough to where he does not have to come out of pocket for that. But I was explaining that to someone that I know. And that person said to me, you know, that's how my mother passed away. Her mother was actually using someone else's blood pressure medicine because she couldn't afford her own. Now let's speak to that. It is not good to use someone else's medication because it wasn't prescribed to them. But for some reason, some people may use someone else's medication because they can't afford to them. How dangerous is it to use a medication that's prescribed to someone else? Well, it's dangerous because you don't know if you're allergic to something in that medication and you're not being monitored by your doctor because there could be blood work. There could be, you know, things that the doctor need to monitor for and you're not going to that resource. You're not going to tell your doctor, oh, I'm taking this medicine. Most likely you're not because you're not taking medicine that he's prescribed. Hopefully you still try to be honest with your doctor and tell him I'm taking this medication and he'll try to tell you don't do that. But um, the thing is you need to be monitored when mm-hmm. you start medication and you need to be followed up. That's why doctors want to see you at least once a year, sometimes twice a year or quarterly. Right. So taking something that doesn't that wasn't prescribed for you can increase the risk of the side effects and may not even work. It may not be the drug for you because that might have been prescribed for that specific person for their condition, but may not be right for you. So every but you know it's a shame that people have to do that. It is. It is. And it it's and and going back to something you said as far as like the cholesterol medicine, you have to watch the food that you eat. I never even thought about that. And I'm gonna be a little bit of, a little bit honest too. When I get my medications from my pharmacist, nine times out of ten, I'm not even reading what is is on there i'm being 100 percent honest because in my mind my doctor prescribed it for me okay i'm gonna get it from the pharmacist and i'm gonna go ahead and take it and i just go ahead and take it and just go about my normal routine so there are foods that can actually affect your body with some of the medicines that are prescribed Yes, there aren't too many, but the main thing I can think of is the grapefruit. Okay. Yes, that affects the metabolism. But mm. it's important to read the prescription label. I mean, at least if you don't read it all the time because you're getting the same medicine, you know there hasn't right. been, it's okay. But the first few times, um, try to read the label because there are a lot of auxiliary labels on the side that give you tiny little details about taking mm. food, taking um or taking on an empty stomach or avoid sun exposure. And people don't notice that. So it's really important to read it. And if you don't want to read it, then at least ask them, ask the pharmacist or doctor. Now, I know there have been times where I've picked up my medication and I've noticed that the color may have changed or the pill, the actual, the look of the pill 
has has changed. I've noticed that. And then I'll see that sticker on the side that says, you know, warning, this medication may have changed. What happens in that that situation? Is it that the the normal packaging is not available? Talk to me about that. That's great that you saw that label that told you that the drug has changed because then you're not scared. Like, oh, they gave me the wrong medication. I've had people call me and say, this doesn't look the same. You know, you gave me the wrong medicine. I say, is there a label on there? Does it say, you know, this this medication looks different, but it's the same medicine. So with a lot of drug shortage, especially in the past year during the pandemic or so, um, we get what's available. There's been new factor shortage, shortage of ingredients. So Sometimes whatever we get is what we have. And if it's it's supposed to be equivalent, it's a generic equivalent, it's just a different manufacturer. So it's not one manufacturer out there that makes your specific generic blood pressure pill. There are different mm-hmm. manufacturers and different manufacturers will have different coloring in it. So the pill is going to look different in color and shape. But the efficacy of it is still supposed to be very similar to you know what you had from your previous um, manufacturer. Um, There are rare cases where someone might experience side effects from one and not the other, and they might say, you know, I really would like that other manufacturer better because I didn't have any side effects, whereas this one is causing an upset stomach. And um, in that case, sometimes we'll try to get that manufacturer, but if it's not available, then, then then it gets tough. Yeah. How should people discard medication they no longer use? The best way is to put it in the trash. And before you put it in the trash, you can mix it up with coffee grind or kitty litter so that no one can, you know, try to take that those pills, you know, and do whatever they want with it. But, um, and there's also drug take back boxes. Mm. That- um, Acme has it, CVS, I'm sure they have it as well, um, where you can just bring your pills, drop it off there. And then I believe the county, wherever you live, check with the county because they do have a one or two days out of the year where they'll take drug back and um, dispose of it for you. Is it not good to flush it down the toilet? And no, they don't. they don't recommend flushing in the toilet. It gets into the water. That was best to just put it in the trash, not in the water. Yeah, I know that was the old thing, right? People used to just flush it down the toilet. Yeah, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Gets into the water somehow. (laughs) Right, right. And my husband's in maintenance, so he gets on me like anything I flush down the toilet that I'm not supposed to. He's like, you're going to clog the toilet. I'm like, everything doesn't clog the toilet. It's going to dissolve. Don't worry about it. But then he was like, it's bad for the water. I was like, all right, then I will do it like that anyway. I don't listen often, but I was okay. You know, I listen to you this time, so I won't. I won't do it like that often. Now, tell me about the people that work in the pharmacy with you. Is there one pharmacist, and and I, I usually see other people in the in the pharmacy. Tell me like about your staff and and what knowledge they have to have to work in the pharmacy. Well, usually there's at least one pharmacist there. And um, there she usually works with a technician and the pharmacy technician. Most of them are licensed, so they have some training. They know basic information about the medications. They're there to assist the pharmacist. They count out the pills. They help us answer the phone, but they are not to um, counsel or Mm -hmm. give advice on medication. Whenever there's something I'm asked about a medication, they should refer the patient to the pharmacy and they ring up the the patients. They can um, do the trash, whatever in the pharmacy, just to help out with the pharmacy. So you said about uh, consulting. So someone can come up to you and say, can they come up to you and say, okay, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing this. And what would you recommend? So I'll tell you a little bit about me. I am a hypochondriac and So there was a Sunday morning when I woke up and my pharmacist was not available early. So I go to CBS and you know how they have that little minute clinic. So nobody's in the minute clinic at this this time. But then I see that they're about to open at this, this CBS. 
And okay, so stressed out, my job, dealing with victims and co-homicide survivors. And I have these hides on my arm. They weren't here. They were like here. Here I am talking to this gentleman. And I promise you, I'm literally like, I'm getting ready to take my shirt off in the middle of CVS to say, listen, look at this. Tell me what this is. This man looking at me like, ma'am, I cannot tell you. He was like, I can't tell you what that is. He probably was like, calm down, go get some cortisone 10, put it on there, rub it and get back in your car. But he said, I cannot tell you what that is. He said, you know, the minute clinic will be open in, in a minute and then they'll be able to help you. It's high. It was high. Some stress. So when you say to someone comes up to you for a consultation, are you limited in what you can say? And do you just say to them, OK, you need to consult with your doctor? Well, um, pharmacists don't diagnose. So if you're going to come and show me something and ask me, what is this and <laughs> what can I do for it? If you tell me it's just an itch. And is you can try certain things over the counter, I can recommend that for you. But um, if it's something more serious, we have to ask you some questions, get some feedback. And then if it's something that sounds like it needs further evaluation, that we would recommend you go to the doctor. But if it's something very minor, like allergies, and you don't have any medical conditions, then I can recommend, you know, an allergy pill for you. Okay. We should be asking, you know, what medical conditions, because if you do have certain medical conditions, you shouldn't be taking certain over-the-counter medications. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And over-the-counter medications, I've noticed that that has grown over the years. Like before, there were some things your doctor had to prescribe to you, but a lot of them are now over-the-counter. Tell me what happens for for that to actually occur? Well, um, those over-the-counter medications were prescription first, and then after they lose their patent, then they get generics. And then over time, I guess with the FDA, they evaluate the safety of it, and um, they can decide certain medications are not high risk. And it's okay for people to just medicate themselves on their own. And I guess that's how they let some medications turn over the counter, whereas certain medications who have that have risk, they stay prescription forever. But certain things like allergy medicine or, you know, Benadryl for, you know, that's over the counter because you don't need, you know, too much information and you don't, and it's relatively safe to take on your own, but they always have the restriction, you know, take only four mm -hmm. lessons and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. work out with your doctor. I've noticed something else that changed also, and this was probably about two, three, maybe four or five years ago, that they asked for my ID if I'm getting some cold medicine, like for my husband, like my husband can take NyQuil, you know, the liquid. I could never take that. It, it um, will cause my heart to raise, but I could take like Alka-Seltzer, but some of the medications, they asked for my ID. Like, well, why do you need my ID for me to get some NyQuil or some Sudafed? Tell me why that changed. Sudafed because um, some people have been able to convert the ingredient in Sudafed into methamphetamine. So they're restricting the sale of it so they can track who's buying it and maybe try to find... <laughs> the people who are making the math at home. And that's why they started tracking it. It's been a while. It's been a long time they've been tracking, but just Sudafed, Sudafedrine, that's the ingredient. Okay. Well, for those of you who are tracking, please know that I know that medications fly off the shelf during flu season. So I am being very proactive. So I buy all of mine in bulk before it flies off the shelf. And I'm not doing anything illegal. Well, I thank you so much for joining me. It was very educational. And I will begin to read when I, you know, have a new medication, what the side effects are, exactly what it's used for, and any caution. 
that I should be aware of. I will begin to do that moving forward. So thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me and thanks for inviting me, Melanie. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today for that very important conversation. It is very, very important for you to take the medicines that are prescribed to you. And if for some reason you cannot afford them, please speak to your pharmacist because they have resources for you. We want you to be healthy and we want you to be safe. Peace and love.